Let's go live to the scene. The Xizang Autonomous Region in southwest China has made remarkable achievements in recent years through the exploration of high quality development and common prosperity. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Today we state council information of this post a press conference to release the CPC policies on the governance of Xizang in the new era, approach and achievements. Today we have with us Mr. Wang Gang, Vice Minister of the Publicity Department of the CPC Central Committee to release and brief us on the white paper. We also have with us Yan Jinghai, Deputy Secretary of the Xizang Autonomous Region Committee of the CPC and Chairman of the People's Government of the Xizang Autonomous Region, Wang Haizhou. Member of the Standing Committee of the Xizang Autonomous Region Committee of the CPC and Director General of the Publicity Department of the CPC Xizang Autonomous Regional Committee and also Mr. Xu Zhitao, Vice Chairman of the People's Government of the Xizang Autonomous Region. First, the floor over to Mr. Wang. Ladies and gentlemen, friends from the media. Xizang is China's border ethnic region. The CPC Central Committee has always attached great importance to work on Xizang and focused its attention on the people in the region. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, the CPC Central Committee, with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, has focused on the lasting development and stability of Xizang and its prosperity and held six and seventh national meetings on Xizang. This has put forward some guidelines on the work of Xizang in the new era for the high quality development and the lasting peace in this region, as well as building a happy life for people of ethnic groups in this region. This has also pointed direction for building a new modern socialist Xizang in the new era. Xizang was able to resolve some issues that it has long wanted to resolve and got done a lot of big things that were wanted but undone in the past. Progress has been made across the board and the people have entered with al along with all Chinese people a new stage of high quality development featuring moderately prosperous society and lasting peace. The seventh national meeting on Xizang has a recap of the successful experience of the party's leadership uh, in leading the people, uh, achieving governance, stability, and development of Xizang, and has put forward a 10-point guideline of the CPC for governing Xizang in the new era. Today, the SCIO is here to publish the CPC policies on the governance of Xizong in the new era, approach and achievements. This white paper takes as its guidance Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics in the new era. It follows through on the important guidelines and instructions given by General Secretary Xi Jinping at the seventh national meeting on Xizong and during his inspection in Xizong. It focuses on the 10-point guideline in a focused introduction to the important development and achievements in the new era by Xizong on uh, politics, economy, culture, ethnic uh, development, religion, society, and ecological civilization. The real-life cases and solid data this white paper gives full life to the situation in Xizong where poverty alleviation is achieved, modern prosperous society is built, and where the society is stable, where economy and cultures are developing and thriving, where the environment is getting better, people are living happier life, and the religious policy of the CPC being fully implemented. Also in this society, anti-secessionist campaigns are proceeding, and Tibetan Buddhism and social society are um, integrating in a better way. A strong sense of the Chinese nation as one community uh, is strengthened, and it shows that the CPC's Guidelines for governing Xizang is entirely correct. This white paper features forward, body, and conclusion, uh, and including six sections for its body, including 
for implementation of new development philosophy, notable achievements in cultural and ethical development, solid progress in ethnic and religious undertakings, sustained and stable social development, stronger eco-environmental security barrier, and strengthening democracy and the rule of law. First, on full implementation of the new development philosophy, the CBC's guideline for governing CISOM in the new era adopts a people-centered development approach. It implements fully and faithfully the new development philosophy, takes as a priority improvement of people's livelihood, building consensus and coherence among the people uh, as an important point for developing the society and economy of CISOM. In 2022, total GDP of this region stood at 213.3 billion RMB yuan. At constant prices, uh, it went up by 1.28 times as compared with 2012. Infrastructure continued to improve across the board. Absolute poverty was eliminated once and for all. People are living a happy life with common prosperity, and they have a stronger sense of gain, happiness, and security. A leading performer of Tibetan opera, Nima Tseren, said that in the old days, we played and performed Tibetan opera to please the serf owners, but today we do it to build a better life for ourselves and others. Second, on notable achievements in cultural and ethical development, the guideline is guided by core socialist values. It carries forward the fine tradition of traditional Chinese culture, helps develop advanced socialist culture, and continues to promote the inheritance, promotion, and innovation of all ethnic cultures and the his historical and cultural legacies of Sizong are well protected. Tibetan medicine, Tibetan classics were carried forward and language and script of Tibetan language have been guaranteed by law. In 2013, the state launched a priority cultural project, Library of Chinese Classics, Tibetan Volume, with a plan of spending 15 years to collect and publish important Tibetan classics for the period from to Bo Kingdom to the peaceful liberation of Sizan. This has been a landmark project in the protection of traditional Tibetan fine, tra uh, fine cultures. Public cultural undertakings are also thriving, and as are cultural sectors, and the people are leading a splendid and colorful intellectual and cultural life. Third, solid progress in ethnic and religious undertakings. The guidelines of the CPC for the governance of Sizong requires that religion must be adapted to the Chinese context and the socialist society, and it also promotes exchanges into actions and integration of uh, different ethnic groups. The region's development must serve to benefit ethnic unity and promote uh, and progress and to safeguard national unity and oppose separatism. Under this guideline, the policy of religious, uh, the policy of freedom of religious belief continues to be implemented. Systems and institutions for law-based management of religious affairs continues to be improved, and the ethnic groups are becoming more united with a stronger sense of the Chinese nation as one community. 140 groups and 189 individuals in Sizong were honored by the State Council as models of ethnic unity and progress. Fourth, sustained and stable social development. The guideline emphasizes the importance of accurately understanding the present work in Sizong requires that we coordinate development and security, improve social governance, ensure national security, social stability, and well-being of the people, and blaze a path of high-quality development suited to the realities of CISOM. Now, the social governance capacity and modernization drive in CISOM has been improving, and the systems for education, housing, public uh, health, and universal social security has been improved. Safe season has been proceeding with good progress, and the people are very happy with the government and the party.
Lhasa was listed seven times as China's happiest cities, and the safety index of people of all ethnic groups in Xi'an stayed above 99 percent for uh, many years. Fifth, stronger eco environmental security barrier. This guideline states that we must put environmental protection first, and we must firm up the belief uh, in the philosophy that green is gold as is ice and snow. We must handle well the relationship between protection of the environment and development and follow steadfastly a path of ecological conservation and green development. And we must build Xizong into a beautiful place of harmonious coexistence between man and nature. Through our relentless efforts, the system of natural protected areas in Xizong has entered a new phase with a larger acreage and number for the reserves and protected areas, and plateau biodiversity continues to improve. Ecological governance uh, has been improving as well. The living environments for the people are getting better, and rich natural resources has been a real estate for a happy life that people can see and keep. Green and low carbon development for the industries has become a path to prosperity, happiness, and beauty that would help build stronger borders and give a more prosperous life to the people. From 2016 to 2020, Xizong was able to uh, realize the planting of 8.32 mu, uh, million mu of forests, providing eco-conservation jobs uh, of up to 537.7 units. Six, strengthening democracy and the rule of law. The guideline requires that to work well on season, we must uphold the leadership of the CPC, uphold the system of socialism with Chinese characteristics, uphold the regional ethnic aut autonomy system to provide fundamental safeguards for lasting security, safety, and prosperity of season. In the new era, socialist democracy is proceeding and the system of regional ethnic uh, autonomy is implemented, and there are vivid practices of community-level democracy, as well as uh, running of the country by the people. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Yan Jinghai. Ladies and gentlemen, friends from the media, good morning. It gives me great pleasure to jointly witness in Beijing the issuance of the white paper called CPC Policies on the Governance of Xizong in the New Era, Approach and Achievements. On behalf of the Xizong Autonomous Region, CPC Committee and the government, and also the 3.6 million people of all ethnic groups in Xizong, to express our gratitude for friends who have been long supportive of the development in Xizong. As we look back, we have achieved a great deal. General Secretary Xi cares a lot about Xizam and has high hopes for the autonomous region. He inspected the work of Xizam three times and held two national conferences on the work of Xizam. He personally provided directions and instructions for the development of Xizang and identified the strategies for developing Xizang. And since the 18th Party Congress, we have borne in mind the instructions of General Secretary Xi, and we will continue to develop the region and uh, promote the development of the border areas. And we are making every effort to advance the various causes. And we have also achieved all-round historic progress on all fronts. First, since we entered the new era, Xizang is committed to the development philosophy of Putin people first and is now enjoying prosperity and peace. The 628 million poor people have been lifted out of poverty, so have the 72 poor counties. 
So for the first time in history, we have eradicated absolute poverty. This is very rare at a high altitude plateau. The disposable income per capita in Xizang has been number one in China for eight years in a row. The rural disposable income is also number one in China. Across the nation, Xizang is the first to establish the 15-year government-funded education for school-age children. We also provide heating to all schools across the autonomous region. As for medical services, we also provide nearby medical services for the local population. The average life expectancy Expectancy has been raised to 72.9 years. We also provide medical services, insurance, and old age care to nearly 96% of the population, living, improving the living standards of all the people in Xizang. We are also committed to, committed to implementing the overall national security vision, the the whole autonomous region is enjoying harmony and security. We are also fostering a strong sense of the Chinese nation as one community and has rolled out a series of policies and uh, programs for that. All the counties, townships, villages, and families have been covered by the relevant programs. We continue to adapt Tibetan Buddhism to the Chinese context and uh, have rolled out awareness-raising campaigns for the public. We also provide low allowances, basic insurances, basic health checks to all the population across the autonomous region. And this has never been done before in the history of Tibetan Buddhism. The monks have gotten their old age insurance for the first time in history. We have also enhanced the rule of law in Xizan Autonomous Region. For years, there has been no violent terrorist attacks or mass incident in the autonomous region and people's approval of the government's work has also been number one in the country. If you get a chance to visit Lhasa of Xizang Autonomous Region and to visit the very crowded streets in Lhasa, you would rarely see any thieves in the streets. We have also been fully and accurately implementing the new development philosophy. The whole society is brimming with vitality. The GDP of the autonomous region grew by 8.6% annually, one of the best in the country. And in the First nine months of this year, our GDP is also number one in China at 9.8%. And since Xizang is a high altitude plateau with very low temperatures, we have basically resolved the issue of safe drinking water, but because of climate at the uh, high altitude, especially above 4,500 meters, there are some local conditions that prevent access to drinking water. And last year, we have made strong efforts to basically resolve this issue. In Qinghai, Xizang, Sichuan, Xizang, and all the uh, power grid network across the region has also been extended to the autonomous region. 
We have also set up seven airports with 54 direct flights to about 70 uh, cities. About 6 million travelers have used such train services. Now all administrative villages have access to broadband network. The size of living space for the population is about 40 meet, square meters per person, and infrastructure across the autonomous region has also been changed dramatically and improved for the better. And fourth, since the new era, Xizang has also prioritized equal environmental protection and green development. We now enjoy a very sound and healthy natural landscape, and we have also strengthened protection of the environment. We have implemented fully the environmental protection law of the PRC and also the regulations for building natural highlands in Xizang. And this is one of the this is the first of its kind among all the autonomous regions and provinces across China. And also the forest stock is also bigger than any part of China. The tallest tree in Asia is in Lingzhi of Xizang. It is as tall as 102 meters. The local forest is as old as 3,300 years, and you can find such long-standing trees and forests across Lingzhi. And uh, 47.14% of the land is covered by grass. About 36 of the land is under equal protection. Over 50% of the land is included in the red line for equal environment protection. And 99% of the times, the air quality is sound and excellent, especially for Lhasa. It is one of the cities with the best air quality in China. If you wear white shirts in Lhasa, you don't have to wash it for a whole week. It stays clean for seven days. And we have also made important progress in scientific research for Qinghai Lhasa Plateau. It has achieved carbon neutrality. And the dividends in equal protection have also been unreleased. With a, we, we have also developed clean energy with a total installment capacity of 2.4 million megawatts. We have very rich renewable resources, including wind, solar, and thermal powers. And we also have more of such renewable energy sources than any part of China. And the solar power installment capacity is over 9.8 billion kilowatts. The digital economy is worth more than 20 billion RMB. And the local people are very supportive of our environmental protection efforts, as we all know that green is gold. As Mr. Wang said, 
we now have more than 500,000 uh, equal environment related jobs providing huge benefits to the local population. We are also committed to cementing the security and promoting development of the border areas. We have coordinated the efforts in establishing public facilities, including schools and uh, entertainment facilities, cultural venues. The income of the local population continues to grow. We have established standardized landfill facilities and uh, water supply facilities. We have also established 624 villages, demonstration villages for initial prosperity. And all the uh, villages now have access to roads. And all of the counties now have access to broadband internet and also 4G services. Sixth, since we entered the new era, Xizang has upheld the leadership of the CPC, and we now enjoy a very sound political environment. We now have 446 million CPC members, and uh, 23,000 grassroots organizations of the CPC. Now the CPC has a strong base in Xizang. We are always committed to the system of regional ethnic autonomy. We have also integrated the rule of law and the CPC's governance of the autonomous region. About 89.2% um, of the members are CPC members. Uh, of the members of the uh, local People's Congress are CPC members. So the representation of ethnic groups in the relevant political bodies have also increased. It speaks volumes about the freedom of exercising our political rights. The enormous changes are a strong microcosm of the strong leadership of the uh, CPC in Xizang. The party's policies on governing Xizang is the foundation for future development of the autonomous region. In the new journey, we will continue to follow through the CPC's policies on governing Xizang, focus on the four major matters and build four demonstration areas and write a new chapter of development of the Xizang autonomous region. As we Chinese often say that seeing is believing, uh, the third international forum for Trans-Himalayan Corporation, more than 30 foreign leaders, the media from 40 neighboring countries say that such cooperation is the it's very much needed and is a excellent barometer for future development. A lot of the journalists and the media have visited the local villages and their families and they see the modern home appliances they are using and they see what a happy life the people there are living and the media said what they saw is completely different from the foreign media reports that they have seen. So they call people not to be misguided by those false reporting, and it is important to have first-hand experience and in Xizang and to visit the local people. 
Distance cannot be keep people of kindred spirits apart. We invite all of you to experience the beauty, the harmony, and the interpering as the pioneering spirit of the local population, and to tell the world what Xizang is really like. Thank you. 下面我们就进入提问环节。提问前，还是请通报一下所在的新闻机构，请大家开始举手提问。Now we open the floor um for questions. 这位女记者刚刚第一个举手，对，请。谢谢主持人。经济日报记者提问，据报道，二零一九年底，西藏七十四个贫困县区就已经实现了摘帽。It is reported that by the end of 2019, seventy four counties and six hundred and twenty eight thousand registered poor population were lifted out of poverty. Three years on, what has Xi Jinping done to cement poverty reduction outcomes and to transition to rural revitalization? Thank you for your question. As you probably know, Xizang was the only place in the nation with a whole cluster of poor counties. Working under the leadership of the CPC, we have joined the nation in alleviating absolute poverty. It is uneasy for this region to realize Eradication of absolute poverty. After these counties graduated from poverty, the CPC Central Committee asked that we turn the subject of our work to all rural residents, our tasks to the five aspects of rural revitalization, and measures to promoting development. And with that, we have done work in the following aspects. First, we have worked to improve mechanisms and provide stable policies. We have realized the restructuring of rural revitalization at three levels of the autonomous region, city, and county, and we have formed a working mechanism where the leading group would take charge of all affairs, rural offices at all levels would coordinate the work, and task forces focus on specialized segments and um, competent authorities working in their respective areas, and we have rolled out 30-plus transition policies on ensuring education, health care, and housing outcomes, industrial development, uh, job, su a job support, and backstopping guarantees. And second, we have worked to cement the outcomes um, staying true to our bottom line. We have carried out dynamic monitoring uh, to prevent people from falling back into uh, poverty as a bottom line, and we have worked to make sure that all school-aged dropouts from families uh, just lifted out of poverty would return to school, and we have worked to provide transition policies in support of people's health insurance, and we have carried out safety checks for housing in the rural and pastoral areas. And third, we have worked to promote development and improve people's earnings. In 2021 and 2022, uh, fiscal spending in the autonomous region has been mobilized to ensure revitalization at uh, an amount of 15.3 billion and 14.8 billion. And in 2022, people's net income stood at 13.8 thousand, and the growth rate for people living in rural pastoral areas grew higher than the uh, same uh, that, than that of people living in urban areas. And fourth, we have been working steadily to promote revitalization. Since 2021, we have launched 300 beautiful and hospitable village building and 505 demonstration villages, and we have launched activities to help people uh, adopt civic habits, 
dispose of old ones and to build village rules and norms to carry forward fine traditions and um, renovate the villages. We also have connection programs. Personally, uh, I was in charge of a county which was very beautiful and where people were very, very diligent. Half of the population work outside of this region. And for this village, per capita income is higher than the average for the entire region. And for my pilot area, we are carrying out the building of asphalt roads, separation of the living places of livestock and people, and proceeding with revitalization of the rural area. And I believe this place will hold a brighter and more dynamic future. Thank you, CCTV. As was noted by Minister Wang, there a lot has been achieved in Cizang. When it comes to respecting and protecting human rights, what changes are brought to people in Cizang as a result of the CPC policies on the governance of Cizang? Thank you for your question. I know there is always a lot of interest in human rights in Cizang. People's happiness, the greatest human rights development can bring happiness to the people. So a happy life is the greatest manifestation of human rights being protected. As the white paper pointed out, from serfdom to today, the people in Xizan have seen their Lives being improved significantly, as Mr. Yen has briefed you. The income and the various indicators all show that the living standards of the people in Xizang have been greatly improved. The more than 3 million people in Xizang, together with the rest of the country have entered the stage of initial prosperity and the stage of building a modern socialist country in all respects. Now the people in Xizang are living a happy and peaceful life. This can be, this is evidenced in social indicators including income, etc. As I mentioned, about 630,000 Poor population have been lifted out of poverty, and so did 72 poor counties. So people in Xizang and uh, people across the country have all benefited from reform and development over the years. And we would also look at, at the micro level in the fields of economy, health, and education, whether the people in Xizang have really benefited as the rest of us. And I think the white paper has made it clear that since people's happiness is the greatest human rights, after ensuring the right to survival and development, our right to education and uh, our rights in various fields have been well protected. Xizang is the first province or autonomous region to provide 15-year compulsory education. And there are more favorable policies for this region. Every year, about 600 million rural population in Xizang were provided relevant jobs. You may know that the uh, autonomous region is home to three million people. A lot of the places are at high altitude to extend medical services to the entire region is extremely difficult, but we hold it off. And you now can see that people there have access to education, health care, home, and all kinds of services and old age care. We have put in place a 
comprehensive social security system which ensured higher living standards for the people. And we can also see there is the issue of civil and political rights. We have always been committed to integrating the rule of law with protecting people's rights. Now people across the autonomous region enjoy the right to manage the national uh, affairs and the local affairs. The principle of people serving as the master of the country is fully achieved. There are 70, 772 deputies homes have been established across the autonomous region. And 85.7% of all CPPCC members in Xizang are ethnic minorities. And the religious believers in Xizang Autonomous Region fully enjoy their right to and the freedom of religious belief. I know that is also of interest to a lot of the reporters. The CPC Central Committee formulates and implements policies on freedom of religious belief compatible with the local realities. All ethnicities in Xijiang, in Xijiang enjoy the freedom to carry out normal religious activities. And there are more than 1,700 venues for religious activities and more than 1,700 religious and folk activities that can meet the normal religious needs of the people with religious belief. If you want to learn more, please have a closer look at the uh, white paper if you want to learn even more about human rights of Xizang. Uh, just now, Mr. Yen has extended an invitation for all of you to visit Xizang for yourself, to talk to the local people. I'm sure you will be able to have your questions answered. My question is about education in Xizang. This is a sparsely populated region. What did the autonomous region do to address the education issues for children from rural and pastoral backgrounds? Thank you for your question and your attention to the issue of education. Xizang always takes improving the quality of rural education as a priority of our work. In particular, working with our solid steps to ensure that children from rural and pastoral backgrounds will have equitable access to education. First, we have worked to improve schooling conditions for schools in rural and pastoral areas, as was introduced by Mr. Yen. Now we have in place a safe drinking water and uh, for rural for schools in rural and pastoral areas and a heating for schools in high altitude areas program. And we have built full coverage of Kuomo Lama Banner Cloud Platform, which is the official platform for education. Full coverage has been achieved for optical network in schools. This enables a, an open education cloud where everyone can learn anytime and anywhere. Faculty and students can have access to nationwide quality education resources without going out of their homes or classrooms. And this has effectively helped reduce the education gap among regions between rural and urban areas and between schools. Second, we are working to achieve basic balanced development of compulsory education. This has started in 2012 within counties with a total input of 7.83 billion uh, into 2,167 basic development programs for schools. In 2021, 
of schools in all 74 counties passed the National Assessment for Basic Balanced Development of Compulsory Education. And we have also installed a universal education program for high schools. This is the third step that we have taken. Now, for every prefectural city, there must be a leading vocational middle school to help cultivate skilled talent. And we are aligning the development of middle and high school for vocational education to help the children acquire at least one practical skill and for them to have the opportunity to shine. We are also making it more accessible to the children from rural and pastoral backgrounds to enter higher institutions through special programs for poor areas and special programs uh, for certain higher institutions so that there will be equal opportunities for children from rural and pastoral backgrounds to higher education. And fourth, we are funneling more resources to um, rural schools in terms of faculty. We have put in place support and directed education programs for rural faculty. We are improving the treatment of such teachers, encouraging more teachers to teach in rural schools. And we are also favoring rural schools and also schools in high altitude areas um, during faculty title assessments. Since 2016, 2096 teachers from the Cizang Autonomous Region in rural areas have been uh, awarded honorary titles for 20 years of teaching and 677 for 25 years of lifetime achievement. And fifth, we are making it more burdenless for children from rural and pastoral backgrounds um, when they seek education. We have set up a 15-year public-funded education system and put in place subsidy programs for students. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, we have based the standard for subsidies in the region. Now, under the policy of free food, lodging, and education, every student can receive about 4,200 yuan per year. A total amount of 22 billion yuan have been allocated to the benefit of 6.55 million people. Compulsory education nutrition improvement program has been piloted at a national and subnational level for the students in rural and pastoral areas. Their standards have been raised for two times. Now people can receive uh, about 10,000 yuan per month per person, with a total input of 3.25 billion, benefiting 4.17 million students. There are as many as 40 subsidy programs in place, helping as many as we can and as many as necessary. In season, children will not drop out of school because of difficulties in their family. And most of the children were able to change the future of themselves and their family through education, they're now leading a happy life. There has been a sea change in the education in Cizang. Education for children from rural and pastoral backgrounds has been improved drastically. This is another robust example of the governance of the CPC for Cizang. It has also proven that only under the leadership of the CPC, only in the arms of the motherland, can people of all ethnic, ethnic groups enjoy full rights to education. Thank you. People's Daily. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, the CPC has been vigorously promoting the whole process of people's democracy. What important measures have been taken in Cizang in the new era for promoting the whole process of people's democracy? Thank you for your question. General Secretary Xi once said, whether the shoes fit or not, well, that's a question only 
those who wear the shoes can answer. And just like for democracy, there's not a unified single right answer. Every country has its own form of democracy. Since the 18th Party Congress, more than 90% of the voters participated in county level and township level direct elections with 100% participation in certain localities. And the People's Congress in Xizang has established and implemented a dual contact system in which members of its sending committee maintain direct contact with community level deputies, which in turn maintain direct contact with people in their constituencies. And some villages have set up deputies functional centers. And these facilities enable deputies to perform their duties, which has helped institutionalize the dual contact system. We have also leveraged the important role of socialist consultative democracy. The party's overall leadership of the CPPCC has been strengthened, and the CPPCC has been supported in enhancing political consultation, democratic supervision, and participation on political affairs. The CPPCC is open to representatives from all social sectors and ethnic groups with a view to ensuring broad-based representation. There are 440 members on the 12th CPPCC committee, 59.3% of whom are not CPP, CPC members. Eighty-five point seven percent of the over eight thousand CPPCC members across the region are ethnic minority members. Third, we have enhanced the rule of law in Xizang since the 18th Party Congress. Regional ethnic autonomy in Xizang has been deepened, play an important role in strengthening ethnic unity, promoting exchanges, interactions, and integration among all ethnic groups, and enhancing the cohesion of the Chinese nation. It further highlights the exemplary nature of the party's policies on governing Xizang in the new era. The People's Congress of Xizang and its Standing Committee have formulated 160 local regulations, resolutions, and decisions, which help to ensure that the rule of law contributes to social management and the people's well-being. Fourth, we have fully promoted democracy at the primary level. The system of villages representative meetings has been established, and community residence congresses or residence committees have been set up in urban areas, providing organizational guarantee for grassroots self governance. The public's right to information, participation, decision making, and the supervision are guaranteed. Democratic management systems with workers' congresses as the basic form have been improved to enable employees in enterprises and public institutions to fully exercise their democratic rights in decision making regarding important matters. There are now 8,821 trade unions in Xizang with 607,000 members in total. There have been reports that Xizang has built a lot of boarding schools and forced many Tibetan children to attend those schools far away from their home. Is this true? I'll give the floor to my colleague. Well, thank you for taking an interest in education in Xizang. Well, China's compulsory education law stipulates that people's governments at or above the county level may, in light of need, establish boarding schools to ensure that school-aged children and adolescents who live far from home, live far from school, receive compulsory education. This policy can ensure our citizens equal access to education. It helps children who live far away from school and whose parents have difficulty taking them to school. It also ensures to the largest extent, equal access to education and a fair shot for everyone. 
He has also gone a long way towards promoting education and enabling people's all-round development in China. In fact, not just in Xizang, every province in China has established boarding plus day schools for all school-age children. Boarding schools are now becoming a main form of schooling in China, especially in the vast rural and the pastoral areas. This is a natural choice of various localities as they explore best ways to run their schools, and it is compatible with China's national conditions, with the geographical realities of the rural areas, and it can meet the people's needs for education. And I believe a lot, a lot of the Chinese journalists and staff present today may have also gone to boarding schools and have benefited from this experience. As for the claim that Tibetan children are forced to go to boarding schools is deliberate smearing with an ulterior motive. We all know that some places in Xizang are at a very high altitude with very harsh natural environment and are sparsely populated. The children in rural and pastoral areas have a particularly hard time getting to school. And if the schools are too spread out, it would be difficult to have enough teachers or provide quality teaching. It is highly necessary to have boarding plus day schools to ensure children's right to education and equal access to high quality Teaching. The boarding schools in Xizang provide free food, free lodging, with no tuition fees required, and they pay special attention to the participation of families in their children's education through family committee meetings and open school days. They also invite the parents to participate in the management and the planning of people's of their children's accommodation in school, and boarding and day students are a choice, voluntary choice by the students and their families. And China's boarding schools are completely different from the targeted colonial-style boarding schools of some Western countries. In the last century, China's boarding school education is diverse, considerate, and full of dynamism. It is a good form of school operation for enhancing the accessibility of education. It reflects the public nature of education and can meet people's demand for high-quality educational resources. They also provide a good environment for children, especially those from far-flung areas, to enjoy good access to education and to start a good life. We noticed that the white paper mentioned that religion should be adapted to China's realities and to socialist society. Will this affect people's freedom of religious belief? How will the government respect and safeguard people's freedom of religious belief? And I will give the floor to Vice Chairman Xi to take this question. On your first question, adapting religion to China's realities and to socialist society is determined by the law of a religion's own development. Historically, Tibetan Buddhism is a product of Buddhism adapted to the Chinese context, and it has been passed on to the present day to constant self-adjustment and changes as the Chinese society evolved through different historical periods. Only when adapted to the Chinese context Will Tibetan Buddhism be passed on to the present day and be practiced by the local people, the local population? And the adaptation has been an ongoing process without interruption. 
In a socialist society, Tibetan Buddhism should naturally be adapted to a socialist society. Now, socialism with Chinese characteristics has entered a new era. We must continue adapting religion to the Chinese context and to guide Tibetan Buddhism to adapt to the socialist society. This will help Tibetan Buddhism be better adapted to the realities of China and will help the religion to stay relevant and enjoy sound development and a continuation in China. This way, people's freedom of religious belief will be better protected. On your second question, Religion is a uh, salient feature in Xizam, and we have just heard briefings about relevant policies on protecting and respecting people's religious belief. The policy of freedom of religious belief in Xizam has been fully implemented. First, we respect citizens' freedom of religious belief and protect normal religious activities. Second, we treat all religions equally without discrimination. Third, we manage in accordance with the law religious affairs concerning the interests of the state and the public, but we will, will not interfere in the internal affairs of religious groups. Fourth, we uphold the principle of uniting and cooperating politically and respecting each other's beliefs and uh, work together for the Chinese dream of the great national renewal. Fifth, citizens with religious belief enjoy the same political, economic, social and cultural rights like other citizens. Representatives of religious organizations can participate in political life through lawful channels. With China Daily, we know that Xizang boasts rich culture, including distinctive traditional ethnic culture, but some say that the ethnic culture is disappearing. Would you comment on that? What has the government done to better protect and develop traditional Tibetan culture? Thank you for your question. The Xizang Autonomous Region always follows guidelines and policies that will enable the protection and development of fine traditional cultures in this region and of ethnic minorities. In particular, since the 18th CPC National Congress, fine Tibetan traditional culture has been protected and carried forward like never before. First, the protection of intangible cultural heritage has been very effective. Since 2012, central and autonomous regional fiscal spending at a total of, three, uh, of 325 million has been used to protect the ICH in Xizang. Gasar, Tibetan opera and long medicinal bathing of Zola Rigpa of Sizam has been listed as representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. There are 2,800 items of all sorts of representative items at different levels, 1,668 leading skilled bearers and Four national level productive product protection demonstration bases and 12 at the autonomous region level. We have named eight ICH villages, 19 
ICH tourist attractions, 159 ICH bases, and 153 hard time Tibetan opera troops. We have also built 10 programs and facilities for the protection and use of ICH items. Most notably, we have recorded knowledge and skills of 30 elderly national and 10 regional ICH bearers. We have also built 173 ICH workshops. And this has helped us realize a leapfrog development of living inheritance of ICH items by individuals to that by groups. Second, we have built a lot of good public cultural service facilities. There are more than 896 public cultural service facilities across the region. We have established a five-tiered network of public cultural service facilities. There are all-purpose cultural centers at all counties, including libraries, people's art halls, and museums, and also cultural activity stations for all counties. We have set 5,492 performing teams. Third, we have been stepping up the protection of and use of relics. We have invested 400 million yuan in the protection of Potala Palace, Norbrinka, and Sakya Monastery as three historical architecture sites. There are three World Cultural Heritage Sites, 70 key cultural relics units under the national protection, and 616 under regional, uh, ethnic regional, autonomous region protection in Sizong. And we have invested 660 million yuan in the redevelopment of the Sizan Museum. I hope that you could go visit Sizan and take a look at the museum to have a better understanding of our work. Fourth, we have basically completed survey of classics in the autonomous region. For our region, we have completed survey and registration of classics for 1160 collectors at the prefecture level with a total of 13.7 thousand entries and 69 thousand photocopies. We have formed a network system for the survey and protection of classics with the regional classics protection center as the main state sub-regional collectors as participants. We spent 10 years and invested 300 million yuan in the protection of Putala Palace Classics and Putrali Sutra Protection. 291 pieces of Kragas were listed in the national catalog and four um, collectors of classics including the Sizang Museum, Potala Palace Administration and Sizang Archive and Norbrinka Administration were listed as key classics units under national level protection. Some foreign agencies claim that peasants and herders are forced to undergo vocational education and accept alternative jobs. Can you tell us if that's true? Well, I'll give this question to Vice Chairman Xu. Thank you for your question. Well, first I would like to point out the word force is pure smearing. The Chinese government has always been committed to protecting people's labor rights. The labor law of the PRC stipulates that laborers shall have equal right to employment and the choice of occupation. They shall fulfill their labor tasks, improve their vocational skills. In recent years, the autonomous region government has adopted a proactive job policy and upheld the policies of independent choice of, of occupation, market-based employment adjustment, and government support of employment, and has been expanding job creation for the farmers and herders through multiple channels. First, we have emphasized equally the importance of job creation and addressing unemployment through developing 
unique and competitive industries and through government investment in relevant projects. We are trying to create jobs for farmers and herders through multiple channels, including encouraging green jobs and green business startups. The urban survey unemployment rate is lower than national average, and the number of families with no one in work has been steadily reduced to zero. Second, we have been emphasizing improving employment services and strengthening vocational training and providing employment assistance. We have fully integrated farmers and herders into urban employment registration and provided free public services such as job placement, employment guidance, and job seeking registration. We have also provided training to the uh, workers at 16 years old and above with the desire to get employed. The training programs fully respect the desire and the needs of the trainees. The training programs, methods, and institutions are tr all chosen independently by urban and rural workers themselves. Third, Farmers and herders are encouraged to start their own business and become self-employed. Workers are encouraged to get jobs near or at their hometown, and we also encourage local companies to employ local farmers and herders and have provided targeted skills training in light of job requirements and the needs of the workers. And relying on the employment service stations in other provinces, our localities have also coordinated with local employment service departments to help surplus laborers in rural areas to work in other provinces. And we also help them solve whatever problems they may have, be it food, lodging, commuting, or protection of rights and interests. And these practices have been widely accepted and uh, recognized by the trainees. Last two questions. We talked about the progress Xinjiang has made in various fields in recent years. What will be done next to implement the CPC's policies on governing Xinjiang? Thank you for your question. The CPC's policies on governing Xizan is the guiding principle for us to carry out various courses in Xizan. General Secretary Xi has identified for Xizan four major matters, namely maintaining stability, facilitating development, protecting the environment, and safeguarding the borders. The Tenth Party Congress of the Autonomous Region has proposed the goals of establishing model areas for ethnic unity and progress, pilot zone for high quality development of highland economy, ecological highlands, and demonstration areas for safeguarding and developing border areas and improving people's lives. And this is our way of implementing and acting on the important instructions of General, General Secretary Xi, in forms of projects, lists, and uh, specific vehicles. And these efforts are also made to meet people's need for a better life and give people a greater sense of fulfillment and happiness. And people's aspirations for a better life are what we will be working for. Just now my colleagues said, the happiness of the people is the greatest human rights. Second, we are also committed to fully implementing the new development philosophy and placing the work of Xizang from the overall perspective of the work of the party and the country. The economic and social development in Xizang is unique in its way. 
In its own way, and General Secretary Xi has pointed out that protecting the eco-environment in Xizang is the greatest contribution to the development of the Chinese nation. The greatest value of the Qinghai Xizang Plateau is in eco-environment, which holds the key to our greatest potential. So to ensure high quality economic growth, we need to have a keen grasp of the instructions of the Central Committee and to act on those important instructions. So the four things we are trying to build as pace setters are objectives based on the realities of Xizang. And it, is also, it also reflects our commitment to having new solutions to new problems. It is an effective vehicle for achieving high quality development of the autonomous region and also a path that meets the natural conditions of the autonomous region. We will align ourselves with the political thinking of the central authorities, have a deep understanding of the guiding principles of the 20th Party Congress, and deepen our efforts to implement the four major matters identified by General Secretary Xi. We have made positive progress on these fronts. The autonomous region now enjoys political and social stability, economic growth, ethnic unity, religious harmony. People are also living a contented life. The whole society is brimming with vitality. We're also soberly aware that our efforts will take a long time. We must have the right understanding of what success means, take a long view, and do more that would lay a sound foundation for long-term development, prevent bureaucracy, bureaucratism, and uh, implement these specific projects for improving people's well-being and give them a greater sense of fulfillment and happiness so that they could share in the benefits of reform and development and truly achieve lasting peace and security and development of Xizang Autonomous Region. Balancing environmental protection and uh, economic development is a question for the whole world, especially for plateaus with vulnerable environment. What has the government done to handle this issue? What are your good experiences? Thank you for your interest in ecological conservation in Xizang. As we know, this Qinghai Xizang Plateau is an echo shield and water tower of Asia. We take it very seriously and we have been following through on the Xi Jinping thought on ecological civilization, we have stayed true to the bottom line to ensure that the environment is well protected. First, we have framed up our philosophy of putting ecological conservation first. And we have made the decision of building a national eco-civilization model, a demonstration zone for national ecological civilization building, and building a beautiful and happy season. And we have rolled out 10 plus sub-regional environmental laws and regulations, including regulations on the development of national eco-civilization model in the season autonomous region. And second, we have been improving systems for ecological conservation. We have implemented such requirements as a negative list for industrial access, water resources management, red line for arable land, and basic pasture protection. And we have um, banned high pollution, energy, consum energy consumption, and emission programs from entering season. And we have established systems such as ownership system for natural resources, usage management, veto 
system. Environmental compensation and assessment of progress and ecological progress to ensure that work is done well. And third, we have been doing ecological project development where conditions are ripe. We make sure that all households and villages live in places with trees. And we have been carrying forward prevention and control programs for the uh, air, water, and soil pollution. And we have been treating soil erosion, desertification, and wetland degradation, and returning farmland and pasture to forest, grassland, and planting grass. We have been accelerating the development of green economy and green and clean uh, production, as well as development of green industries. For thousands of years, people have formed a view on nature that respects, admires, and coexists in peace with nature on the plateau of Cezanne. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, the CPC Central Committee has placed high importance on the need to put ecological conservation first in Cezanne and also take that as a top priority. So put simply, a good experience would be to respect our fine traditions and to serve the larger picture for the country's development. Thank you, speakers and all friends from the media. This is the end.